Welcome to our exploration of terrestrial life of the Jurassic period, a time when fascinating creatures roamed the earth. In this video, we'll delve into the world of diapsids, focusing on dinosaurs and pterosaurs, uncovering their diverse lineages. Then we'll turn our attention to the synapsids, discussing the mammaliiforms as well as the early mammals which emerged during this period. Let's journey through the Jurassic, discovering an incredible array of species that contributed to the rich tapestry of life on Earth. We'll first consider the more dominant diapsids of the Jurassic, mostly the dinosaurs, but also the pterosaurs. First, let's consider the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are a form of archosaur. Archosaurs are a clade of diapsids into which the pterosaurs we'll meet later on belong as well. As for the Jurassic dinosaurs, let's consider their two lineages, starting with the bird-hipped Ornithischians before moving on to the lizard-hipped Sauruscians. The mostly herbivorous Ornithischians can, for the most part anyway, be split into the dominant subgroups Tyriophora and Sauropoda, the latter of which contain both Ornithopoda and Marginocephalia. First, for Tyriophora. Basal Tyriophorans come to us in the early Jurassic with Skeletosaurus, Emosaurus, and Euxesaurus. In the Middle Jurassic, we start seeing members of two important Tyriophoran subgroups, Stegosauria and Ankylosauria. The earliest definitive Stegosaurian is Huayingosaurus. Later in the Jurassic, Stegosaurians got bigger, with examples from around the turn of the Middle to Late Jurassic, such as Tuojingosaurus and Gigantspinosaurus. The Late Jurassic saw further radiations with Miragaya, the Centurus, Hesperosaurus, and the famous Stegosaurus. Ankylosaurs, another subgroup of Tyriophora, bring far fewer fossil samples from this period. They picked up in the Middle Jurassic, and one of the earliest examples known from near-complete fossil remains is Gargoylosaurus. Now for Sauropoda. Let's begin with Ornithopoda and then consider Marginocephalia. Ornithopoda picks up in the Middle Jurassic. Ornithopoda translates the bird feet, a reference to the standard ornithopod's three-toed feet, though some early ones had four feet. Examples of Jurassic ornithopods include Camptosaurus and Dryosaurus. For Marginocephalia, they pick up in the late Jurassic. These creatures were marked by a bony shelf or a fringe at the back of the head. The two clades within Marginocephalia are the thick-skulled Pachycephalosauria and the horned Ceratopsia. For the first definitive Pachycephalosaur, we have to wait till the Cretaceous, though one Middle Jurassic specimen has been claimed as well. But for Ceratopsia, or horned faces, their story begins in the Jurassic. You'll know this clade by its most famous member, who doesn't appear in this period, Triceratops. Early Ceratopsians were bipedal and relatively small. The earliest known one is Yinlang Downzai of the late Jurassic, who reached 1.2 meters in length and 10 kilograms in body mass. Another early Ceratopsian is Chaoyingsaurus, who's estimated to have been about a meter long, weighing some 6 kilograms. Now let's consider the other dinosaur lineage line, the Ceriscians, or lizard-hipped dinosaurs. Ceriscians are divided into two primary groups, Theropoda and Sauropodomorpha. Both of these lineage had already picked up in the late Triassic, and let's first consider the Sauropodomorphs, which include sauropods and their ancestral relatives. They'd started off fairly small, but had grown a lot already in the Triassic and become the dominant herbivores. Now in the Jurassic, they continued to grow so that sheer size offered protection against predators, and their long necks facilitated access to high vegetation. Starting off fairly small, an early Jurassic basal sauropodomorph example arrives to us in the form of Inkisaurus. 
Very large sauropod examples come to us from the late Jurassic. Among others, there's Diplocitus, the and then there's the even larger Supersaurus, who reached over 100 feet long and weighed over 35 tons. Now for the theropods. These animals dominated the carnivorous scene on land during the Jurassic and the Cretaceous, and it's from them that birds emerged. The most famous theropoda member, Tyrannosaurus, doesn't come until well into the Cretaceous. Though small in contrast to what's to come, one of the earliest large-sized predatory dinosaurs was the early Jurassic theropod, Dilophosaurus. Much larger predators come to us in the form of the Middle and Late Jurassic Torvosaurus and the Late Jurassic Allosaurus and Sauropheganax. The Middle Jurassic saw the first definitive members of the clade Coelurosauria. Coelurosauria is the clade containing all theropod dinosaurs more closely related to birds than to carnosaurs. Within Coelurosauria is the only clade of dinosaurs to make it till today, Manoraptora. Coelurosauria may have picked up as early as the late Triassic, but the earliest unambiguous claims come from the Middle Jurassic Proceratosaurus and Calescus. Aviali, or bird wings, the clade containing the only living dinosaurs, the birds, got going in the late Jurassic with Archaeopteryx generally accepted as an early representative. Earlier claims have been made, such as the predating Archaeopteryx by some 10 million years, late Jurassic, or Ornus Shui. Now for the more traditional flying vertebrates of the period, let's turn to the last archosaur type to call our interest, the pterosaurs. The more primitive pterosaurs fall under the Ramphorhynchodea. That includes all non-pterodactyloidea pterosaurs, a more derived group of pterosaurs who don't yet exist as we enter the Jurassic. An early Jurassic pterosaur is Dimorphodon. From the middle Jurassic comes Darwinopterus, a transitional species, the earliest known to show some pterodactyloid features, including long vertebrae in its neck. The basalmost pterodactyloid finally appears in the late Jurassic in the form of Cryptodracon. Pterodactyloids, in contrast to the Ramphorhynchoids, possess the shortened tail and elongated metacarpals. Other late Jurassic pterodactyloids include Pterodactylus and Nathosaurus. Ramphorhynchoids continued as well, with some late Jurassic examples being Ramphorhynchus, Scaphonathus, and Bellabrunus. We'll now turn to our synapsid brethren as we consider the continued story of mammalia forms and then the entrance of the early mammals of the Jurassic period. We'll first consider the mammalia forms of this period and then mammals proper. The Triassic had already seen the earliest mammalia forms with genera such as Morganucodon and Megazostrodon of the Morganucodonta order, as well as Hiramiavia and Cuneotherium. These creatures were small, likely nocturnal insectivores, and that generally remains the story in the Jurassic, as for the time being, mammalia forms filled the niches that the larger archosaurs didn't. However, the Jurassic sees the appearance of the earliest true mammals, and some mammalia type lines indeed now follow different dietary and ecological paths. Hiramiavia doesn't appear past the Triassic, though the order Hiramiida lasted through the Jurassic and into the Cretaceous. These creatures were generally herbivorous or omnivorous, and some could climb very well. Some Haramayidans adapted to gliding in the Jurassic, such as Vilevalodon, Meopotegium, and Chienchow. Cuneotherium lasted into the early Jurassic before this appearing, Megazostrodon lasted into the early Jurassic, and Morganucodon lasted even longer, with the latest discovery dating to the Bathonian Age of the Middle Jurassic. The order to which they belonged, Morganucodonta lived further into the Cretaceous. Now let's turn to another order of Amelia forms, Docodonts, one example of which from the Middle Jurassic is Docophosser. Docodonta is an order of now extinct mammalia forms with relatively complex molar teeth in contrast to earlier mammalia forms. The order got going in the Middle Triassic and would last into the coming Cretaceous. 
Some dokadons were adapted to new niches, such as a gilodokadon who could climb trees and may have been herbivorous. Another Middle Triassic dokadon is Kistorokoda, who lived a semi-aquatic lifestyle with teeth adaptation suggesting a mostly piscivorous diet. The mammalian order of Eutriconodonta first appears in the early Jurassic, and they would reach their peak diversity in the early Cretaceous. Eutriconodonta comprises those members of Triconodonta that form a natural group, or clade. Triconodonts more broadly are characterized by their distinctive three cusped teeth. Eutriconodonts had a range of species occupying a variety of ecological niches, though they were mostly carnivores. Some notable Eutriconodonts of the Jurassic were Amphilestes of the Middle Jurassic and Frutifossor, Cuneodon, and Triconolestes of the Late Jurassic. A particularly unique Eutriconodont was the Middle Jurassic gliding insectivorous Volaticotherium. Next are the multituberculates. This order of rodent-like mammals picks up in the Middle Jurassic. They would peak in the coming periods, lasting to the late Eocene, when the more derived multituberculates were around those belonging to Simulodonta. The more primitive ones that we're concerned with, containing all multituberculates that lie outside of the advanced group Simulodonta, fall into the group Plagiolacida, one Jurassic example of which is Polcofatia. We can split currently existing mammals into the egg-laying monotremes and the live young-birthing therians, included in which are the eutherians, the clade including all therians more closely related to placentals than to marsupials, that includes me and you, and correspondingly the other clade of therians are the metatherians or all therians more closely related to marsupials than to placentals. Theria pick up in the late Jurassic. While monotremes may have split off in the Jurassic, and molecular studies suggest perhaps even in the Triassic, we don't have fossil monotremes until the coming Cretaceous. As for the Therians, the earliest Eutherian is from the late Jurassic, coming in the form of Jurimaya. For the earliest Metatherians, we'll have to wait for the Cretaceous. And there you have it, folks. We've made it through the main terrestrial players of the Jurassic period, meeting many of the fascinating creatures that once called Earth their home. From fairly small to fairly large dinosaurs and high-flying pterosaurs to the intriguing early mammals that were just starting to make their mark, Jurassic Earth wasn't lacking. Be sure to stay tuned for more explorations into our and our world's history, where we'll uncover ever more about our story. Until then, get existentially based and stay curious.